Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give all of you a quick rundown of the color wheels, which you can find over on the color page of DaVinci Resolve 17.1, and what each of the features that you're going to find here actually do, because there are quite a few knobs and settings that you can adjust in order to change the color look of your video. So, we're over on the color page, so obviously this is regarding color grading. We can see in the top right that I have the node section opened up over here. So by default, any video clip you put onto your timeline, it's going to have one corrector node inside of the color page. So you have your video input over here on the left. This is your corrector node and this is your color output. So if you want to adjust the color of your video and various other settings as well, then you would do that on a color node. Now, of course, this node graph can get more complicated, but just for the sake of the video, uh, let's keep it at that. So we apply our effects and changes to this color node. And one of the options we have is actually auto color grading. So if you'd rather just kind of skip this whole process and see what Resolve will come up with automatically uh, for your videos, then you can click down here in the color wheels at this button called auto balance. So auto balance is going to automatically color grade your video clip on this corrector node. So you're going to get the same result as if you went up to the color menu at the top, and then you chose auto color for your clips. So let's go ahead and click auto balance here. And you can see that when we have that enabled, the colors in our clip are going to look different than the original. So if we want to see how it looked beforehand, we can click on this bypass color grades and fusion effects icon over here. And we can see the before and after. So clearly in this case, the after is a little bit more vibrant. And you may prefer that. I wouldn't say that 100% of the time when you use auto color grading, it actually makes it look better. So you can try it. But sometimes you just have to go in there and do things manually yourself. So let's go ahead and actually reset the color grading for right now. And we'll just play around with it manually working from scratch. So let's go ahead and do reset node grade here. So so that once again, we have a blank canvas to work from. So once again, so that we have a blank canvas to work from, let's go ahead and reset the color grading on this corrector node. So I'm going to right click it in the node graph and go to reset node grade. Now we can start talking about some of the other settings with a blank slate. So for most of these settings, you can actually see uh, what kind of color change you're going to get by pushing it one direction or the other. In this case, you can see right below the temperature setting that a low or below zero uh, color temperature is going to get you a more blue look on your video, kind of more of an arctic feeling or a very low temperature light. So let's go ahead and shift this over towards the left. And you'll see that the color in this video shifts a lot more towards blue. Uh, obviously, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and shift this over to the left. And you should see your video overall becoming a lot more blue just from with this one. So let's go ahead and shift the color temperature over to the left. It's going to make your video a lot more blue. Uh, giving the illusion of a lower temperature. So let's go ahead and shift this value over to the left. It's going to make your video look a lot more blue, a lot more uh, like it was shot in the Arctic as opposed to wherever it was originally shot. Now, if we go to the opposite direction, if we have a positive temperature value, it's going to start glowing more of an orangey red color. The further we push this, the more it could look like a very hot planet or possibly something like a sunset on a savanna. Uh, just looks hotter in general. So that's the basic idea of the color temperature setting. Let's go ahead and reset that to zero. So the next setting over here is the tint. So the tint here is going to shift the bright areas in our video clip either towards magenta or towards green. So this is a gain value gain is going to affect the bright areas in our video clip. Gamma is more of the central colors. And when I say gamma is going to affect the colors that are in the middle in terms of shadows or high brightness areas. And then lift is going to affect those shadow dark areas. And by having lift gamma and gain, you can kind of change the color of the different areas of your video uh, individually because because these target different brightness amounts. So the tent also affects the gain. So if I push the tent towards a high magenta color, then you'll see that the brightest areas, namely where the sun is setting and all of these oranges kind of coming out are going to be affected much more than the grass down here. In fact, I'm not even sure the grass changed at all there. And we can shift it the other direction as well. So negative 100, you can see that the sky and the bright areas became a lot more green in its tint compared to the original kind of orangey purplish color. So that's what the tint changes. 
So the next option here is contrast. So when you have uh, contrast higher than 1.0, that's going to mean that the different areas of your video that have different colors, different brightness settings are going to be pulled further and further apart from each other. And they're going to display in a manner where one looks very different compared to the other, as opposed to if you lower the contrast below 1.0, it's going to make them more similar to each other. So if I lower the contrast down to you know, a very low number, then that's going to reduce the amount of detail between the two different areas. And if we make a contrast of zero, well, then everything would look the same because there is no contrast. So at contrast one, that's what it looks like. And then you can see that if we increase this contrast, then the color differences between the areas in our video become more and more pronounced. So next to contrast is the pivot value. So this is going to basically determine at what point you want the shadows to not get pushed towards this really, really dark color. As you increase the contrast, it's going to be making those changes more and more pronounced. As you can see, uh, with a contrast of 1.0, we still have dark shadows at the bottom, but at least you can tell what's going on. But as we increase it further and further, then those values that would fall below this pivot are going to be pushed more and more towards the dark color. So if we lower our pivot value, we're basically determining at what point we should cut off darkening those dark shadowy colors in our video clip. And so if we increase the pivot the other direction, then more and more of our original video is going to become kind of a candidate for pushing it towards darker colors as a result of the contrast increase. So the more contrast, then those areas that fall below the pivot are just going to get darker and darker. And if we have those values above the pivot point, then they're going to be pushed towards very, very bright in your face kind of colors. So once again, as you can see, if we go to a very low pivot point, everything gets kind of overblown with a lot of brightness because uh, this is only cutting off the darkest of the dark colors now to be uh, pushed towards even darker with that contrast value. So this mid detail option, you could sort of think of it as a blur sharpness slider, where if we increase the detail past zero, it's going to sharpen up different areas in our image. And if we lower it below zero, it's going to make it a bit more blurry. So let's go ahead and go to 100. And you should see a little bit of an increase in the sharpness, uh, making it easier to pick out the details. But if we compare this to negative 100 right here, then we can see a lot more blurriness in uh, many of the areas of our video clip. So just kind of you can go between them on a slider and you can see the difference there. OK, next up, the actual color wheels themselves. So as I mentioned before, lift affects the shadows of your video clip. Gamma is the center range, so areas that aren't too bright and aren't too dark. And then gain affects the brightest areas of your video clip. So if we take the brightness of the lift here with this white setting here and we increase this then you'll see that this brings all of the shadow areas in our video up now of course if you increase the brightness on your dark areas but you don't affect the brightness of your other areas then that is also going to kind of affect the overall contrast of your video because now these dark shadowy areas have a brightness that's much closer to the gamma so likewise if we went the other direction with gain and we shifted this brightness back down, then that would be reducing the brightness here and everything would end up looking kind of the same. So we could reset that and you could actually go the other direction with that. If you wanted your shadows to be incredibly dark, you can lower the lift below its base value of zero. So aside from uh, the brightness of your different areas of your clip, and you can affect the gamma brightness as well, obviously, then you have red, green, blue colors for each of those. So if you want to change the color, depending on the brightness of your video clips, then you could, for instance, shift in the lift how the shadows should look. So if you want your shadows to look a little more purple, then you could just shift that color balance in the wheel towards the color you desire. You can also affect each of the red, green, blue values individually down here if you prefer. So yeah, you can see that if you just increase it a little bit, it actually affects it a lot. So the actual values that you might need to change it here aren't much at all. Um, if you just want the color change to be a little bit more subtle. So if we reset it, you can see back to the default, that's already very different than how it was a second ago. So changing the color gain, if you want uh, this really bright area with the sunlight to look even more red, then we could shift this towards red. And you can see all of these bright areas now have a much more reddish tone to them. And then if you want to change everything in this corrector node, 
towards a certain color, then you can use the offset. So I'm not going to be covering it in this video, but you can split your clips into individual corrector nodes and recombine them later on. So uh, using the color wheels affects the corrector node, not necessarily everything in the final video output. So changing the color offset towards a certain color. If you want everything to look a little bit more red, just kind of shift this over towards red and that should be reflected over here. Now at the bottom, we have a few other options here. So color boost here is going to make your colors in the video very, very vivid uh, without necessarily making them more contrasted with each other. And if you decrease the color boost below zero, it's going to make it look more grayscale. At negative 100, it would be pure black and white here, as you can see, a little bit creepy. Uh, so let's increase the color boost towards 100. And you can just see incredibly vibrant, uh, perhaps well overdone uh, colors but you could go for something in the middle as well if you think that makes it look a little nicer. With the shadow slider, you can bring up or down uh, the brightness and the visibility of all of your shadows in your video clip. So if we increase this a bunch, it's uh, quite nice when it does this effect. It does look different than how you would see it if you just increased the lift. So if we increase the lift here, you can see this kind of still this little bit of a screening effect laid over everything but when you increase the shadow it does make the shadows a lot more visible but you don't get that kind of white overlay a little bit so when you increase the shadow slider it's going to be taking all the shadows in your video clip not necessarily just what's in the lift um, and it's going to be making it a lot more visible on the screen and I would say that in many cases this might actually look superior to just adjusting the lift setting here because if you adjust the lift, you can see that while it does make the shadows a bit more visible, you also get this kind of little white screening on it if you increase the lift too much. So the end result you get from increasing the shadow might actually be preferable there. So if you take the shadow and we lower this down, then that's going to make the shadows, of course, even darker. So if you wanted to make it kind of like a silhouette type deal where your dark areas are even more darker or basically completely black, then you could use the shadow slider to achieve something like that for sure. And then this next option here, high slash light, is going to be affecting the brightest areas of your video clip again. So if we increase this, then it's going to be making your bright areas like the sunset pop a little bit more and we can lower it down to a below zero if we want to in a sense cast some shade on it uh, make that a little less visible so some combination of these two sliders should be able to get the overall feel of your darkest and brightest areas to look how you want them to do and i guess you could just do some minor more adjustments with lift gamma and gain after that so the next tool we have here is the saturation, which is really similar to the color boost. Uh, the difference is that the color boost is going to affect the less saturated areas in your video more, uh, whereas the saturation value is uniform, just applies to everything equally across the board. So if we increase the color boost to 100, and then we reset it and increase the, the saturation to 100, you can see there's not a huge amount of difference so if we go between 100 value in each of these, you can see that there's not a whole lot of difference in this scene. But I suppose one reason to use the color boost over the saturation would be that if you already had some areas which were very saturated in your original video clip and you didn't want to oversaturate them anymore, but you just wanted to bring up the color in some of the more gray tone areas of your video, then you could use color boost instead as a slider. You could also use both of them in conjunction, of course. There's no reason you can't just have a little bit of extra saturation and a little bit of color boost until you get it to look kind of right. So uh, next is the hue. So hue is going to be the overall color tone of your entire video clip. So you have the base colors here with the 50 hue, but as soon as you start shifting this, it's going to basically take all the colors in your video and replace their red green values with something uh, completely different based on wherever this hue slider is going. So as you can see, based on this little bar down here, if you shift the hue towards zero, well, you're going to get a lot more red in your video clip. And then we go the other direction towards something like a 70, 80, 90. And we're looking more in those blues and purples for the base color of our video clip. Now, uh, the hue does leave the brightness of it alone. It's just changing the base color in your video clip. And 
obviously, if you do this, it is really going to change how your video clip looks. So next we have the hue, which in a sense is the base color of your video clip. So you can take everything in here and shift the RGB values towards a certain color by adjusting the hue. So when you do this, the brightness in your video clip is left alone, but you can see that all of the colors that are displaying are not displaying their original color, but something much different based on what hue you are shifting them towards. So the last setting over here that we have to talk about is the luminosity mix. So this is defaulted to 100, which means that 100% of your luminosity changes from the lift, gamma, and gain are going to be coming from this left hand setting the y or the luminance of our video clip so as we increase the luminance it's going to be increasing basically the brightness of those different areas of the clip however if we shift this towards zero and we have those values set then none of the actual uh, luminance changes is going to be coming from that y value on these different properties so if you have it somewhere in between then some of your luminosity change is going to come from the white setting and then the rest is going to come from your red green blue so if you want increasing the amount of red green and blue to affect not only the hue of your uh, video clip but also the luminosity then you'd want this on a setting lower than one. So if we increase the red, green, blue of the lift to something like 0.15, then you can see how that also affects the luminosity because our luminosity mix is set to zero. But if we make this 100% and our luminosity Y value is zero, then you can see that the only thing these actually change is the color hue, but not the luminosity itself. So we can put this somewhere in between if we want to pull a mix from the two. And you can just determine basically how much you want these red, green, blue values to affect the luminance uh, rather than only the Y value. And of course, that could be 0%, 100%, or somewhere in between, hence it being a mix. So a few other tools that I missed earlier on in the video. You have this white balance option where you can pick the area of your video frame where you want to automatically have a white balance temperature and tint set around. So if I was to take this and put it around this very white, bright, hot sun, left click there, we're not really going to see anything since that's already uh, basically the hottest, whitest part of our video. But if we take this and we move it to something like the sky that we want to balance around, then we can see that the temperature and tint settings are going to automatically kind of be set based on that. And then if we move this to something that's already very dark and cold, like the blue skies up there at the top, well, it's going to balance around that and set the temperature way higher. And uh, I guess the tent gets modified there as well. So you could use this as a quick way to get a certain look for the color temperature and tint of your video. So also down here, we have pick white point. So if there is an area of your video that you want to look rather white and everything else should be balanced around that, then you can just select that with this. So if you selected this sun area, it's not really going to change the gain since it's already kind of white. So it doesn't make sense to adjust the values down here to balance around that. But if we were taking another area of the sky like over here, which is a bit darker, and then we drop the pick white point onto that, well, that area is going to become brighter. But so does pretty much everything else in our screen since we're balancing around making this white now. So depending on where you choose, it's going to drastically affect your gain. And likewise, over here on the left, we have pick black point for the lift value. So if we choose an area that's already black, like down here, we're not going to get much change in our automatically determined lift values. But if we choose something, you know, like the grass down here at the bottom, well, yes, the grass is going to be made uh, black. And so is a lot of other areas inside of our video clip. So we're balancing around making this area black rather than its original base color. So if you had something in mind for what should be considered black or what should be considered white, I could see how using those tools could save you a little bit of time and manually adjusting the gain or the lift values. But uh, pretty much looking at it from here, uh, that's just about everything with the default color wheels. There are a couple other options here. If you click on the other tabs, bars for a different way of displaying um, the wheels so they're no longer wheels where you turn it around but you raise these up or down and then on the logarithmic 
option. It's very similar. You just have a few different settings up here. And the Y luminance is dropped from each of these color wheels. But overall, those are going to be roughly the same as well. So that is pretty much going to cover it for this video, taking a look at the color wheels of DaVinci Resolve 17.1 and trying to explain what each of these settings do for you. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. I hope all of you got something out of this video, and I will see you in my future video content.